left field and deep, and it's a two-out double for Story. Line to yes. left into the corner. One run is scored. David Dahl will get a green light. Desmond comes through. Para base hit left field. Desmond coming around third. How do you like this two-out rally? This ball's well hit center field. Long run for Enciarte, and Go. it is gone. DJ LeMahieu. How do you like that? Oh my gosh! How? With that, wake up in the morning, try to do it again. How special last night was. We've gathered at SunTrust Park, game four, this four game set. The Rockies, as you know, have won the first three. They are a season best 11 games north of 500. And they'll face the veteran 34 year old Anibal Sanchez. And Charlie Blackman's in the box. And I heard Doug Eddings yell, play ball. So we'll do the same. First pitch of the ball game is in there. A strike at 90 miles an hour. Sanchez, longtime Marlin, longtime Detroit Tiger. First season down here in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is out in front of the plate. Sanchez with an easy play, one guy. Let's take a look at the Choose Go starting pitcher preview. Brought to you by our friends at Conigo. Conico. Herman Marquez looking for revenge against Atlanta's worst outing this season came at home against Atlanta in early April and Annabelle Sanchez has never lost to the Rockies he's 4-0 it's it's amazing for somebody that's been in the major leagues for 13 years Annabelle Sanchez accomplished something in the first half that he's never done before had a sub 3 ERA 2.6 ERA he's been outstanding over his career always known for the big strikeouts Series not getting it quite as much as age is starting to creep up. He's so got a great curveball. Great curveball. And the interesting thing about that curveball, you see only 9% of the time, he'll throw a lollipop curveball. That fastball's in there. One ball, one strike. You know, one of those ones that arrives at right about 70 miles an hour. And the average curveball in the big leagues is typically in the upper 70s. Here's DJ. Gave the Rockies the lead in the 10th with a blast over the center field wall. Again, in a ballpark that has relinquished the third fewest home runs in baseball per at bat. And he hit it to dead center. Yeah, the guys were talking about it. They said off the bat, it just kept traveling. On a night also where the ball wasn't traveling real well. Spit on that slider. It's two and two. Rockies exploded for five runs on seven hits in the final two innings, the ninth and tenth. Sanchez, extreme first base side of the rubber, and that is called strike three by Doug Eddings. DJ thought it was in. Kind of filed that away. Two outs as we take a look at the Southwest batting order for Buddy Black on this Sunday afternoon. David Dahl's going to bat third, give Cargo the day off. Nolan will bat fourth. Trevor Story having a great road trip, just having a great season, period. He'll be in the five spot naturally. Then it's Gerardo Parra. He's been swinging it well. Ryan McMahon's at first base for Ian Desmond. Tony Walters doing the catching. Fastball high and away to David Dahl. Here's the 1 0. That's outside off speed. Here's the defensive alignment for the Braves. Charlie Colberson getting his first start of the series. He's in a shortstop. He plays everywhere. Dansby Swanson is off today. And big Tyler Flowers is behind the plate. 3 0. He caught a couple of dates ago. On deck is Nolan. Arnato added a fifth run of the tenth, driving in Cargo. There's a walk. Cargo had doubled over the head of NCRD after the.
home run by LeMayhew. And he was promptly brought around by the guy coming up, Nolan, to give the Rockies that two run cushion and ultimately the, the two run win. For the win is brought to you by Pizza Ranch. Connect four like that. 3 0 this series. They have never won four in a season versus Atlanta. And keep in mind that, you know, the first decade basically or maybe a little less than that the Rockies would come to Atlanta twice you were typically playing them six times down here this was this was a house of horrors not this ballpark it's just the second year just coming to Atlanta was difficult remember the first year Spilly I mean you were not yet a Rocky obviously 1993 the Rockies went 0 for the season against it. Didn't matter where they played. They were 0 for 13 against the Braves in 93. And then lo and behold, two years later, they're facing them in the playoffs. That just doesn't happen. You would figure you'd, you'd win one game. Right? In 13 games and lose all 13, that's hard to do. That's like the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns no losing lately. They do well in the preseason. The pretend games. Two strikes on Nolan. Dahl at first. Rockies actually have won five straight here in Atlanta. They won nine of their last 11. Here goes Dahl, and it's fouled off. It's great to see David running well today after fouling that ball off the same foot that he broke and had to miss a couple of months. David staring back at Stu Cole. Hey what a job by Stu last night holding Trevor story in that ninth thing. Stu scoreboard dictated dictates everything and he knew that stories run didn't mean anything at that point. And this is popped up foul ground and it'll go out of play. Well, at the time, because Ender and Ciarte never made an attempt to throw him out at home plate, and Ciarte was conceding the run as well because he didn't want to allow the base runner to get to second base. But if he did make a throw, and threw a good one, because Enciarte is a gold glove center fielder, and Trevor Story was thrown out at home plate, Cardinal sin. And of course, it played out really well. And, and, and if the next guy makes it out, you lose 3 nothing instead of 3-1, it's a loss. Well, it should have been a loss last night, <laughs> given the fact that it was 3 nothing with nobody on and two outs in the ninth inning. You, you, we looked it up. What was it, 99.6% chance the Braves were going to shake hands? They were supposed to shake hands. Didn't happen. That's why we love the game. Good pickup by Freddie Freeman. The ball touches the dirt. On a ground ball, you can use it again. If it touches the dirt any other time, you cannot use it again. As outfielders, we would skip the ball off the dirt to help our pitcher out hey. if they know what to do with it. Greg Maddox knew how to use a, uh, a scuff, right? Get even more movement on his fastball. Dahl takes off inside. Flowers throw. Not going to get him. David stays on the base with the hand. David Dahl now in scoring position. With two outs. Fifth stolen base of the season for David Dahl. And this is a great move for the Rockies. If you get thrown out, Nolan gets a lead off the inning. If you steal second base, you're in scoring position with one of the best in baseball. Plus, you're forcing the Braves to vacate an area. Nolan's so good with the bat. Put a ball in play. Why is that slow curve? So Nolan goes down on a 69 mile an hour curveball. We'll see Herman Marquez when we come back to Atlanta, Georgia.
guard for the Rockies. And you look at his first 16 games this year, not the ERA you'd expect for Marquez. The last eight, he has pitched beautiful baseball, including starting out this road trip in Houston. Seven innings of one-run baseball, just three hits allowed. And he's always highly motivated. He will be exceptionally <laughs> highly motivated today. Yeah, you always remember your worst start, and the Atlanta Braves, really, they hurt him bad in Colorado. Don't forget, it was like two degrees during that start that Herman pitched in. The curveball for me is the most important pitch that he has, along with the fastball command. He's <gasps> locating fastball like he did right there on the outside portion of the plate. Throw the curveball off of it. It will be a nice game for Herman. Boy, he had great stuff. out dueled Justin Verlander in Houston. And this ball's hit the center field, and Charlie is going to do something that uh, no one's been able to do in 10 days. Retire Ronald Acuna Jr. when he leads off the ball game. He had reached nine consecutive games. Here's the Southwest batting order for the very affable Brian Snitker. Ozzy Albies, Freddie Freeman, Nick Barcakis, Johan Camargo. It's been the same five every single day for Atlanta. Then Ender Inciarte's in there in the sixth spot. Charlie Culberson's had a wonderful year in a platoon role. He'll bat seven, Tyler Flowers eight. And this ball is pulled by Albies. Good pickup by That's McMahon. Great pickup. Get and there. And quickly Marquez, uh, half a step in front of Albies, who can really run. That's a nice pickup. You can see the backhand play from McMahon, and you understand why the Rockies have been so high with his skills as an infielder. Typically, he's a natural third baseman, and Albies leads baseball in first pitch swinging. Job from Herman to get over. That's a great play. Two outs, that'll bring up Freddie Freeman. There's David Dahl as we check the Rockies defensively. He's in right for Cargo. And on the infield, you just saw Ryan McMahon playing for Ian Desmond at first base. With Freeman up, the Rockies do shift in the infield. And quickly, it's 0-2. That's not easy to do. You know, McMahon... A natural third baseman who'll play second also. And then you pick up that first baseman's glove, and you feel differently with the first baseman's glove. That just missed. Marquez hopping around, thought he may have painted the outside corner. It was close on the Subaru strike zone, but just off the edge. But technique-wise, with the first base glove, it's different. Remember, when I had opportunities to play first base, and I always had a, an outfield glove. But throwing on a first baseman's glove, you lose the baseball and the webbing all the time. Plus, you field off. They teach you at, at the professional level to field off to the side with a first baseman's glove. And, you know, your whole life as an infielder, it's, you Keep know, it in front. fielding it in front, hands out front, butt down. 2-2. And this ball is in the air to left center field pretty deep. Going back and watching it hit the very top of the wall is Blackman. Parra will send it towards third base, and it's a two-out double. Freddie came within, it looks like, less than a foot of hitting it out. I think it hit the yellow line, which, again, means the yellow nothing. line means nothing. Uh, it's, it's just a, a visual for the umpires. Right. Hanging curveball. Herman was hopping to try to get that two strike pitch. And yeah, that's right off the yellow line, which means nothing. It's overrated. Still a great chance to get out of this situation without any damage being done by Marquez as the very talented Nick Marquez will step in. Off-speed pitch, I love it. He opened the door there with a changeup. I really enjoy watching Hermont pitch. Just 23 years of age. Great focus. Great talent, obviously. 
great kid. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Batting leaders, Freeman and Marcakis, and sitting in fifth, Nolan. He went east, west, Spilly, and then he went north with that pitch. It's a level of count at two and two. He's in every quadrant of the zone, except the middle quadrant. Middle quadrant, you don't uh, stay don't healthy there. there. Nope. I'd like to see him get his curveball down. It's been up so far in this first inning. That typically happens with a pitcher as they try to find their secondary pitches early. There you go. He got that one down. Tipped foul, and it remains a two and two count. 14 pitches into the bottom of the first inning. Three minutes second with two outs. Braves were hot when the Rockies got to town. They'd won five straight. And now they've lost three in a row. Rockies trying to make it four straight. Sun trying to peek out through the clouds this morning. Weather's been, it's been great. Great. Yeah. The heat and humidity, not oppressive at all. Like we said last night, if there's ever a place to go visit a new ballpark, come check out the field here in Atlanta. Everything around it is, it's amazing. Three and two. This is one of those spots where a pitcher, and this is not a knock on young Johan Camargo, but this is where you may not throw a strike here you may throw a chase type of pitch and if you walk up you're okay with yeah, you're it fine with it first base is open Camargo not the same threat that Marcakis is 3 2 in fact last night with the winning run at third in the bottom of the ninth, Adam Adovino a 3-2 slider to Dansby Swanson. He said, I had two goals on that slider. One, it wasn't going to be a strike. And two, I wanted airborne so so Chris Ionetta could catch it. With the runner on third. With the runner on third. Yeah, that's what I mean. So he tried to get the chase on a slider in the dirt. And a two-out walk. Let's revisit that pitch last night. Perfect. That was a great, a great job by, by Chris to get there also, even though it was airborne. Look at Adovino's reaction. <laughs> so now a fresh count, two on, two outs, and it is Johan Camargo. These Braves are typically very aggressive, which is common with the team. It has a number of young hitters in it, and that's a base hit. That'll bring home Freeman. Marquez will go first to third. The Braves take a one nothing lead. Well, he was aggressive, and he hit it hard up the middle. And Herman had a chance to get out of this inning with almost seven pitches thrown. Freddie Freeman just worked it. Hit that double. And then a first pitch fastball up in the zone. One nothing Braves. Well, three straight games. The Rockies you see the first inning situation. We documented that. That's been an issue for every Rocky starter not named Kyle Freeland. But the Braves, three straight games, have scored the first run. Ciarte 
with a 1 0 count. One and one. A little bit off the plate, but remember when I said in the first inning when DJ got called out on a pitch off the plate in, both sides will file that array away, right? Spilly, I mean, you have to know the strike zone also it. the umpire. Yep. Again, you can see where on the super strike zone exactly where the miss is. They're up. You like to see misses down. That are above the belt. Two. two and two. Center field, Charlie will get back and make the play. In the inning with two outs, a double, a walk, and a base hit, and Atlanta has a run. We'll go to the second, one nothing Braves. Some heroics from the Rockies as of late. There, that was not their MO to start the season. Up until August 15th, a negative 70 run differential when it came to scoring runs the seventh inning and on. But the late runs have come for this team, and for Bud Black this series, he sees a lot of hard work. A lot of grit for sure. I think the guys realize what's going on. That you know, this is a real, uh, this is a real pennant race, and we're in a, we're in a. We're in a we're in a race with a lot of good teams, and that's one of them on that side. And there's you know teams across the country that we're battling, and our guys are are up for the challenge, and they uh, they're not quitting. We've seen this a number of times where our guys keep going, man. It's great. Those are two words you love to hear in mid-August for the Colorado Rockies pennant race. That's what this team is trying to do. And Drew Trevor Story does it right there to even things up. That'll help. Trevor Story, a little line drive over the left field wall, and the Rockies are back even, 1-1. And for Trevor, his 26th home run of the year. Man, oh man, is he having a year. Well, the reaction was great because it didn't look like off the bat that he got. It was a low line drive on a curveball. Ronald Acuna in left field didn't even move. Speeds up his bat. Trevor catches it off the barrel in front. That ball is crushed, Drew. That's a line drive. He is so strong. And I think he learned, and he said this, go back about three months where he just took off, and he hasn't let up at all. Para with a foul tip, 0-1. He realized he doesn't have to give maximum effort to hit the ball 430 feet. 
You just have to meet the barrel with the baseball. And if you can catch it out front, that's where the party's at. He's been to a lot of parties. <laughs> 26 parties. Two strikes on par. McMahon is on deck. 26 home runs, 84 driven in. And the average at 295. And I like it from the reactionary standpoint for the Braves fans because they felt good about their first inning, scoring a run, two outs, nobody on, trying to get that momentum back. Here come the Rockies. All right, first pitch strike, and it's tied up just like that. 104 miles an hour off the bat. About the huge hit Parra had last night off the bench. Left on left. Two and two on Gerardo. Hitting 309 out on the road, ninth best average in the National League. He's been on base six of his last 13 plate appearances. And that is sharply hit, but Freeman grabs it and he'll flip to Sanchez one out. Take a look at Trevor's StatCast AI numbers. 104 miles an hour off the bat, 21 degree launch angle. That's a line drive. And one good slap of Stu Cole's hand. So here's Ryan McMahon. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. Oh, one. Downstairs, one and one. Well, Anibal Sanchez had a first half ERA of 2.6. Second half, it's been a bit of a struggle for him. 4.26 ERA. He's also pitched better on the road than he has at home. He had a brutal year last year in Detroit. That's one of the reasons uh, yeah, the Braves signed him looking for a bounce back. Remember back in 2013, he led the American League in ERA with a 2.57. In fact, he finished fourth that year in the Cy Young voting. This guy's been a really good pitcher for a long time. Fouled off. Rockies used to see him frequently in his days with the then Florida Marlins. They changed their names, Billy. They're now the Miami Marlins. Tony Walters on deck. And that ball's fouled off. You know it was neat last night, you and I both went into the clubhouse, and, and we don't always do that after a game. But but you just wanted to kind of feel what it was like. And you know, 30, 40 minutes later, it's, it, it becomes business as usual, shower and getting on the bus, heading back to the hotel. That's strike three. But those first, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes after a win like that, it, it's a pretty good celebration. Oh, isn't yes. It? They have their whatever, Win music that they have in every team yet you typically find a song that the entire group likes so whenever there's a win they play this song and I, I'm not sure what it is and even if I did do I wouldn't share it because that's private to the guys in the clubhouse but they turn on their song they all give high fives they hoot and holler for a bit guys go around and they talk about aspects of the game that they liked and then they start Getting ready, they go in the food room, they eat, they start to unwind a little bit. And on a game like last night, it's emotional. You usually sit around and you're like, I can't believe that just happened. It was great stuff. Here's the 0-1. It's 
downstairs one and one I was talking to Adam out of Vino last night in the clubhouse and he was still he still had a big grin on his face and, and Adam's one of those guys very cerebral and and enjoys the numbers in the game and some of the the new wave metrics and you know Jacob had given us the stat last night that the Rockies when there was two outs and nobody on down three to nothing there was a ninety nine point six percent chance and you regurgitated it that that Atlanta is going to win the game right obviously well when I was talking to Otto he broke that stat out he already knew Sanchez throws out Tony Walters so the Rockies get even with a leadoff second inning home run from Trevor Story one one middle of two to break your ball. Toyota Tundra at your hometown Toyota stores by Papa John's. Use the code ROCKSWIN for 50% off pizzas at PapaJohns.com the next day. And by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. Rockies and Braves tied at one with Ryan Spielberg. And Jenny Kavnar. I'm Drew Goodman. We go to the bottom of the second inning, bottom third of the order. To face Herman Marquez. It'll begin with Charlie Coberson, the former Rocky. And Charlie tried to bunt his way on. That goes foul. Coberson pinch hit last night. Of course, appeared two nights ago in mop up duty pitching and got everybody's attention when he hit 94 a couple of times. What a postseason last year for Charlie in a Dodger uniform. Remember, Corey Seeger got hurt. And Charlie Two. all of a sudden at times was in the center of the storm and between the NLCS and the World Series he went eight for 16 for the eight hits were extra base hits including a home run off Justin Verlander in the World Series. One and two. Well, if you walk around the ballpark today you'll see a lot of blue t-shirts with Charlie Culbertson's face on it and it says Charlie Clutch. He's turned into the mayor of Atlanta. Glad he turned away from that. Two and two. He was out before the game. There was literally teams, and he was shaking hands and kissing babies, legitimately kissing babies. Uh, he's got uh, three young ones at home himself, he and his wife. And he went, no question about it. Good curveball. <laughs> Charlie wanted help at first. You only get help if the umpire at the plate needs help. 
Strikeout call by Doug Eddings, and that is the first strikeout of the afternoon for Herman. I'm sure it will not be the last. Even though that this is right, Doug Eddings got the call right. I think everybody in baseball would love to see this rule just change. Force the first base umpire to call it every time. You'd save a lot of angst between the umpire and whatever hitter. Ruled a little bit high, ball one on Tyler Flowers. You can do that with nobody on base, but that's what happened with the Dodgers last night. Floor on the mound. He balked in the winning run as the Mariners won. What was that? Five to four? Spilly. It was four three. Mariners and Max Muncy against Edwin Diaz. They had not, when they were, um, they were 60 and 0. Going to the ninth inning, they were 60 and 0. 60 and 0. I guess now it's 61 and 0 because they didn't lose the game, but. Diaz, who's been about perfect this year. Oops. Oops. A lot of oops going on. <laughs> Let's just play catch, fellas. Oh, that was great. Charlie has the baseball, and he he's going to throw away. it into the bullpen. <laughs> Left side, Nolan calling for it. No one's going to argue with him. And that is the second out. That'll bring up Sanchez, the pitcher. Fans, join in on the conversation. You have uh, an open invitation. Send us your comments, your questions. Use Twitter and include the hashtag. Hashtag. What's hashtag mean? I have no idea. I think it's something you use to put paintings on the wall. That would work. Toyota talk. I mean, I think it would work. I have no idea. Hey! Sanchez without a hit this year. And he will remain hitless. Good inning for Marquez. A strikeout, a pop out, and a weak ground ball. We'll go to the third. The Rockies won, the Braves won on a Sunday in Atlanta.
third in the top of the third. And now it's time for Built for Baseball, brought to you by T-Mobile. DJ, of course, with the heroics last night, but it got us thinking. He's been a hero at several different points this season, starting on April 15th at Washington, the go-ahead where the Rockies would eventually win, and that gave him three wins out of four in Washington. June 28th at San Francisco, the big home run that gave him a 9-8 to eight win. They went on a tear after that, winning 15 of 18, and then, of course, last night in Atlanta, the game all tied at three. In the top of the 10th, DJ goes to the deep, deepest part of this ballpark, as Buddy Black reminded us. And I was asking him, you know, I saw DJ crack a smile. What is that like for the clubhouse in there and the guys in the, the dugout? And he said, I think guys really respond when DJ shows any sort of emotion. And to do it on a stage like that last night in the comeback fashion they did, it was pretty special. Well, there's no question. I think DJ has had the two biggest home runs of the season for the Rockies. I know Ryan McMahon a week ago, but everything has been kick-started since San Francisco with that DJ home run. Hey! And then last night, I mean, it's just been an, an incredible run for the Rockies, if you think about that time frame from San Francisco to where we are today. It has been. Big swing and a foul tip. It's an 0-2 count on the Rockies leading hitter, Herman Marquez. 357 batting average. That's just ridiculous. Pitchers shouldn't be able to do that. And it's caught. That's not right. Albi steals a base hit from Marquez. Yeah, you know, we have fun with it, but this will keep you in games. This will get you an extra inning. Yeah, no question. He really has a good sense of hitting. Here's how you know that. We broke this stat out not all that long ago. Marquez, yet yeah, 357 before that at bat, but 43 at bats this year. Spilly, he struck out only six times. I know it. And that's a rocket, but right back to Sanchez. And Charlie squared it up, but it, it's put in the book as a 1 3. This was better than his first 1 3. That was a little dribbler to the mound, but that was a rocket. Yeah, that's a base hit. Well, Charlie's been taking good swings. So here's LeMayhew. Pulled out on a fastball inside that kind of a borderline pitch. That was clearly in there. One strike on DJ. This ball's hammered deep left field. He's done it again. And the Rockies take a two to one lead. To center late last night, to left early this afternoon, two to one, Colorado. Now 11 home runs on the season for LeMayhew, nine out on the road. When DJ has the team on his back right now offensively with the power. Wow, he knew it. You could hear Anibal Sanchez yell right after he threw that pitch because he knew it. Well, this is going to fall nicely for David. Yeah, and you know what? Acuna wasn't going after it. I don't know if he lost it, but Acuna's just kind of watching, and the ball landed five feet fair. A uh, double for Dahl. Watch Acuna. Yeah, he gave up on it. He thought it was going to be a foul ball. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's, a it, double, it's a double. It, no it would be a why. double either way, based on where it landed. But the optics of it don't look great. No, and when he gets to that dugout, somebody will saddle up next to him and ask him if he saw it first. Not be accusatory initially. Breaking balls in. Ball one. 
11 home runs ties a career best now for LeMay Hughes said a couple of years ago in 2016. Early in DJ's career when he was still with the Cubs in particular people would look at him 6 4. This ball's fouled off you know 210 215 pounds strong guy they say you know you got to hit more home runs well he, he's always been so good at staying inside the baseball if you watch his batting practice the pop is there. Mm -hmm. But he hits so many line drives he doesn't have when you have the low launch angle or, or the line drive type swing it, it's really difficult to drive the ball out of the ballpark. That's such a good point Spilly and you study hitters all the time and if you think about most of DJ's home runs the last two last night was a line drive basically over the center field wall clearly the one he just hit moments ago was a line drive over the left field wall you look at the numbers and, and I'm glad we put those up 348 a batting title 310 last year he's at 276 right now here's the 2 1 on Nolan 3 and 1 and, and I've said this and you said this about DJ and about Charlie and you can go probably down that lineup and pick a few other guys out and say wait a second they're below what they normally do and in some cases somewhat considerably so which tells you they're probably fixing to turn those numbers around the final six weeks. This is up the middle base hit Dahl around third and he'll score and the Rockies take a three to one lead. Another ribby for Nolan Arenado his 86th. Gotta love two out offense. This offense is rolling right now. And it's the quality of bats that we're seeing. That's that's what's so impressive to me is that it starts from the top. It works its way down to even Herman with the quality of bat this inning. If you make a mistake to this team, they'll make you pay. That pitch is a slider up off the plate. Nobody's better than Nolan than driving in those two out RBIs. No play for NC Arte. Rocky's very athletic. Those guys in that lineup run well. Nobody better than the guy at the plate, Trevor Story. You know what? Dwayne Espy, Jeff Salazar, Dwayne, the hitting coach, Jeff, his assistant. They put in a ridiculous amount of time, day in and day out. Not only scouting reports, but with each individual swing and where they are mentally and you know what when, when you see results like you've seen late last night and here in the first few innings you know that that's their reward because hitting's tough hitting's Billy <laughs> you know that better than anybody hitting is not easy and those guys you know in the cage hour after hour after hour flips video front toss side toss. And that's the aspect too. Even in a win, there's somebody that didn't get a hit that night that may not be feeling great. Even in wins, there's somebody that had a bad night. Yeah. And you have to work with that. There, there's never all nine hitters or all eight position players in the lineup that are all hitting at their best. Nobody's going four for four every single time. Story hits this in the air to fairly deep right center field. And Ciarte will get to the track and gather it in. The Rockies with two outs. TJ LeMayhew, breaking ball, gone. And after a double by Dahl, Nolan Arenado got another run across. 3 1 Rockies, middle of three.
with another home run. Top of the order, Ronald Acuna Jr. takes a strike as Marquez gave up a run in the first with two outs. Then he worked a one, two, three second. Acuna's got a 11 game hitting streak going, and this is in the air to right center field. Moving back and making the catch is David Dahl. Folks, when the Rockies score seven or more, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to receive your Rockies taco special. Live, ma live Moss at Taco Bell. Ozzie Albies will step up. He was robbed of a base hit his first time up. Fine play by Ryan McMahon, who's at first base for Desmond today. And that pitch is inside ball one. There's a strike. One of the up and coming leaders of this talented Atlanta Braves team, despite being just 21, is Ozzie Albies. It's ridiculous watching two young players this good, this talented. I mean, we talk about for the last three days of having the opportunity to see veteran quality at bats like Freddie Freeman and Nick Marcakis. But having the front end with Ronald Acuna and Hazi Albies, they're fun for us to watch as visiting broadcasters. How about the giddy up on that heater? 97, and it's see you later. Two outs, second strikeout this afternoon for Marquez. I'll bring up Freddie Freeman, who came within about six inches of hitting a home run in the first. He doubled. Off the very top of the left center field wall, he would eventually score on a base hit by Johan Camargo. Freddie takes a rather violent hack, doesn't he? I love his swing. I like it because in a six foot five frame, his head doesn't move a lot. He's got great plate discipline. And I'm a, I'm a big high two-hand finish. Dude. I was going to say, he's got the high finish that is favored among so many hitting coaches and hitting philosophers in this day and age. 0-2, and a ground ball to DJ, the short fielder. That came up, and DJ will throw to first. That's a tidy seven-pitch inning for Marquez. We'll turn the page to the fourth. The Rockies leading 3-1. to one. Customers, get your two-for-one Rockies club-level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Rockies in a good place. They're up three to one. A lot of offensive confidence right now. Upstairs with my partner, Ryan Spielborgs. I'm Drew Goodman. Jenny Kavnar is down dugout level. Matt Diaz, an, an old teammate of yours, just mm -hmm. came by, and I know you work with him on, on MLB radio. And one of my favorite Matt Diaz stories, and he, and he just 
told us verified it again, verified it, was the story of when he was at Florida State, big star. And he played with you with the legendary Santa Barbara Santa Foresters. Foresters. Here's Gerardo, and the breaking ball's outside. And he was doing hit, as a lot of guys, you've done it, a lot of guys do hitting lessons to make some money in the offseason. And he's working with an eighth grader by the name of Andrew McCutcheon at the time. And after the first lesson, he said to McCutcheon, he said, dude, you already have a better swing than me. That's and, right. And he meant it. And he meant it. Okay. Matt Diaz was in A-ball at the time that he was working with Andrew McCutcheon. Okay, so he, wasn't, he was done with Florida he State. He was done with Florida State. He was, baseball. He was okay. in professional baseball, and he was trying to make earn a little money in the offseason, which is what guys have to do. I had a job working at a restaurant, and here comes Andrew McCutcheon. And McCutcheon still talks about that to, his, to this day, about how Matty Diaz came in, saw the swing, and told him, that's better than what I have right now, and it gave him some confidence. He ended up, I think, I think he led his varsity team in hitting that year as an he, eighth grader. He not only led the varsity team, he led Polk County, Florida as an eighth grader in hitting. That's a good changeup by Sanchez, and Parr is gone. That's the fourth strikeout for Sanchez. One out, McMahon coming up, and Diaz was uh, the honorary <laughs> Leading the chop. Leading the chop today. And, he, you know, he flew in for that. Atlanta does a nice job bringing back so many uh, former Braves. Two stints with Atlanta for Matt Diaz. Real good fourth outfielder. Oh, and one on McMahon. You were saying with that Foresters team, which was always loaded with talent, you said he played on it when he was a high school senior, which is the as you said, was, summer league team. Which, which is unheard of. And he modestly said, I think they wanted my brother. This is uh, ground ball to Albies, two out. Well, I got to throw out congratulations then again to the Santa Barbara Foresters for winning, I believe it's their seventh national baseball championship. Legion Summer League victory that they had in Omaha uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Wichita. They were at the NBC. They won it again. That's a great tournament. Our Jeff Houston was signed out of the NBC years ago. Tony Walters with two outs. Tony getting to start back-to-back -back ball games. In fact, he's getting to start three out of the four ball games here in Atlanta. To put some at-bats together. When he's behind the plate, the Rockies are 25 and 15. Three runs, four hits for the Rockies, a couple of home runs, Story and LeMayhew. A run on two hits for Atlanta. Both of those hits came in the first inning against Marquez. There's the slow hook. Strike three, good inning for Sanchez. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Rockies three and the Braves one.
as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Let's get our all copy news and notes. And the Rockies, they have a huge stretch coming up against their division starting on Tuesday. They're going to play 26 of their next 31 games against the NL West. They're 26 and 24 in the division. They've played them tight all year long. They play seven of the next 12 against the San Diego Padres. They're seven and five against the Padres so far this season. It all starts at Coors Field on Tuesday. San Diego, they've used 12 different starters so far this season. The Rockies are going to face Erlen Nix and Luke Casey. So they might see uh, Nix as the new one in that bunch. And we know the Rockies have struggled a bit this season when they haven't seen a pitcher yet. So that'll be an interesting matchup. They've had their struggles in the past with the Padres. And we know this is ending that stretch of playing teams hey. against 500 at 46 games. The guys haven't been shy about it. They like to play those tough games. They like to play tough opponents. So we'll see how they react when they come home on Tuesday, guys. Yeah, it'll be an interesting stretch. Not that uh, this latest stretch hasn't been fascinating. As Jenny remarked, 46 in a row ties the National League record, all-time record. Here's the 1-1 one -one on Marcakis. Ground ball, middle of the diamond, and that'll sneak through. Base hit. Third hit for Atlanta. And that'll bring up... Camargo, who had a base hit to drive in Freddie Freeman in the first, the lone run allowed by Marquez. Tough stretches all time. Consecutive games against plus 500 teams. The Rockies tie the 2012 Braves and the 1926 Phillies. And the Braves and Phillies did not have the record that the Rockies have in those 46 games. 29 and 16 entering play today. Yeah, it's amazing. That, that Phillies team that played 46, they went 15 and 31 during that stretch. And Camargo quickly behind 0 and 2. And going back to the point Jenny was showing us is, yeah, you're going to have the San Diego Padres come into town. I know that the Atlanta Braves and most of Georgia can't wait to see the Rockies leave Georgia. But when you come back to Denver, understand that the Padres have the worst record over the last 30 games in all of Major League Baseball, 9-21. and 21. And you know you're better than that group. And then there's it becomes that added pressure to try to beat them, right? And... As players, when you know that you're better than that team, you're playing a better brand of baseball, you have more talent than the other side, all you have to do mentally is play your game. Will the fact that, you know, your T-minus swung on a missed, and there's a strikeout. We, your T-minus six weeks to go in the season. You're trying to win a division. You look at the standings. You're, you're looking up every night, seeing what the Dodgers are doing, what the Diamondbacks are doing to keep that same focus you had when you're facing the Houston Astros or the division leading Atlanta Braves. And I think that's what the Rockies have done extremely well during this real tough stretch, 46 games. They've just tried to play their game. It wasn't so much we're matching up against the Houston Astros defending world champ. We're coming to Atlanta facing a, a team that's leading the division. Line drive and the throwback to first by Story. Not in time to get Marquecas. Two outs as Enciarte is retired. That'll bring up Culberson. Now, talking to the guys, that's what that's what they've said. That's what Buddy's repeated multiple times. I've always felt this, and I know you'll agree, that baseball, more than any other sport, is about playing to your standard. You're playing, you know who used to explain it this way, Jim Leland, you're playing against bad baseball. And, and you know what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. It's like you go out and play tight baseballs the Rockies have. I think they have one error in their last eight or nine games. You play clean, you throw strikes, you take high quality at bats, you're going to win more often than you lose, mm -hmm. regardless of what team shows up. Yeah, baseball is different than any other sport. Basketball, I heard Jeff Hornacek say it one time, he said, if you just have a team of guys that put crazy energy and just run up and down the court, you'll win NBA games. On the ground to Nolan. Ball comes up nicely for him, and he'll throw across. Culberson is retired. Another strong inning from Herman Marquez. The Rockies lead 3-1, to 10-pitch inning.
for our CenturyLink High Speed Challenge. Go to at t Sportsnet RM to cast your vote. And today, a Georgia native, the longtime traveling secretary of the Rockies, Paul Egan's has our poll. Thanks, Drew. When I come back home to the South, my four favorite Southern dishes are one, fried chicken and or pork chops, number two, collard greens or turnip greens, number three, fried catfish, and number four, grits. I always tell the players on Sunday when they serve grits for breakfast, they're hits in those grits. Hey, am I making you guys hungry? Absolutely, as Marquez steps in. I had some grits yesterday. Did you get any hits? No, fortunately, the Rockies were very shrewd and did not call on me to, to get any hits. Got to get your hits. Got to eat your grits. Now, did you, um, this has popped up in foul ground. Freeman will make the catch. Why not? So when you were playing in Atlanta, did you ever have Sunday morning grits? I, I'm assuming I did because I did have some Sunday morning hits uh, in Atlanta. Now, the Southern style of eating grits is with a lot of butter a lot of butter and honey and some of my southern teammates they would prepare the bowl for me like brad hop would do it. like yeah get your hits eat these grits and it really is it's funny when you have rhymes that make sense for the guys to do something together is there anything better than fried chicken no fried chicken's pretty good here's a man of the south charlie blackman stepping up paul egan's is great and we thank paul for doing that for us uh, this morning amid his uh, long list of uh, items he has to cover on a getaway day. And Paul's going to stay behind because tomorrow's a day off, so he's going to spend a little more time with mom and other members of his family before coming back to town Tuesday morning. One and one on Charlie. I told that story before. Paul, initially, when he uh, finished at the University of Georgia, worked for the Atlanta Braves. Paul was a this is found on. Paul was a biology major in in college. That designs one point of being a doctor. Then he was then he was a, a trainer. Yeah, Paul Egan's was a trainer. One of the all-timers, the super, super nice people you will ever meet. You just cannot do any ticket request when the dogs are playing football. <laughs> no. If Georgia Bulldogs are playing football, you do not text Paul E. 2-2 on Charlie. Three and two. I sat next to Paul on the on the bus this morning from the hotel, and I was asking him, "Say, how the dog's going to be?" And he broke down just about everything. And it, my son Jacob's with us, and he asked Paul about a couple of guys where they were from. Jacob knows his college football, and he said, "Well, that guy's from Warner Robins, Georgia, and that guy's from." I mean, he knew he knew the hometown of every guy on the roster. Yesterday was a pretty significant blow for Georgia Bulldogs football because they lost their top running back recruit. But Paul told me that they're also about four or five deep at running back in Athens. Still, you lose the number one blue chip in all of collegiate sports, the number one recruited or number one rated running back as a freshman. That, that stinks. But that stinks. You know, there are certain schools that can overcome that. Georgia typically is one of them. One out walk, DJ coming up. Time for the Coors Light. Refreshing finish. How about this? Last time up for DJ, he swats his 11th home run of the year. And that put the Rockies up 2-1. to one. They'd add a run later on in the third inning. So for Anibal Sanchez, he's already been burned by his off-speed pitches. And if you're curious why he throws so many off-speed, 
329 batting average against his four seam fastball gives you good reason why he's throwing soft today. He, he doesn't have the overwhelming fastball you so typically see from guys now. I mean, look at Mike Fultonevich yesterday. He was terrific for seven innings. He's kind of sitting at 97 or so. Third time through the lineup, Sanchez goes from uh, 193 first time, 210 second time to 264. And the OPS goes up considerably as well. One ball, one strike. This is the aspect of the game that I enjoy so much is paying attention to pitch sequences. What pitchers do the third time through if they throw a different pitch sometimes they won't un unveil a pitch until the third time through. This is popped up in right field foul ground and come out and make it the catch is Marquez. Two outs, and that'll bring up Dahl, who doubled his last at bat and would score on the base hit by Arenado. Also a walk today for David. <laughs> on the days against a right-hander, those rare days where Cargo gets a day off, Buddy keeps Nolan in the cleanup spot, and he likes to insert David in the three hey! spot. But you know, you peek down the road. Kind of a prototype to hit in that uh, place in the order, isn't he? I think so. He shows a lot of skills. And he waited beautifully there. I mean, that was gorgeous. Charlie's going to go first to third. Misplayed for a moment by Markakis. Dahl thought about moving up and then stopped. How about this piece of hitting? Well, Dahl showed us two nights ago when he had that two RBI single. It was a 2-0 changeup. So Dahl has the ability to hit off-speed pitches. Stays in his legs. His hands stay back and had little, little head movement, which is great. So you can see that baseball. There's a chance. Charlie running hard first to third. There's a bit of a bobble by Markakis. He just sank the hips and waited, and as you said, kept the hands back. So Billy, when, when you see a curveball that's like eight to ten miles an hour slower than what you're used to seeing, that, that's tough, isn't it? It really is. But you have to be able to, if you have good balance, if you can keep your weight in your legs, in your feet, in your heels, then you don't typically land hard on your front foot. One strike on Nolan. And that's to third and hanging near the line was Camargo and he'll throw out Arenado. Threat ends, the Rockies leave runners at first and third. They do have a three to one lead, middle of five. SunTrust Park in Atlanta.
Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees, that's transparency. They did a great job with SunTrust Park in the neighboring area as Marquez's first pitch of the fifth inning at 95 misses outside to Tyler Flowers. 8-9-1 for the Bravos in the uh, fifth. And that's a soft line drive off the end of the bat. Nolan's got it, one out. Well, it should not be lost in the victory last night for the Rockies was the work of the bullpen. Antonio Sensatella coming off a, a missed start, a little bit of soreness in the, in the shoulder. He's fine, by the way, but he went five innings last night, gave up two runs. So the bullpen ends up picking up five innings. They allowed just one run on four hits. Ottavino gets the win. Wade Davis got the save. So good work by those fellas that uh, hang out away from everybody else. Center field. Here comes Charlie, and he'll make the catch. Two outs. I'll bring up Ronald Acuna Jr. Fly ball to center. Fly ball to fairly deep right center field, handled by Dahl. Vaughn waits for DJ to shift. He's about a step and a half onto the left side of the infield. And uh, Cooney, as he did before, just kind of drops the bat in his hands and takes the pitch. Four strike one. I mean, he's trying to give Anibal Sanchez a little breather, but I think as Acuna learns, if he gets a pitch that he can handle because of his pop, go ahead and fire what are you talking about? 10 seconds, 15? Strikes are precious to give away, you right? You can't give away strikes. Especially if you're facing a guy with Marquez's stuff. One and two. He settled on a curveball away. And that was not where Herman wanted it. He almost kind of stole a strike there. Well, the curveball's been up for Hermani, and you're right. He almost stole it on the inside portion of the Subaru strike zone. That's the good there one. There it is. Yep. Uh, another minimal pitch inning. Spilly, that was a nine pitch inning. He's had 10 or less three straight innings. Maybe he'll pitch a doubleheader today. Three to one, Colorado. Like two today? Ticket package includes a limited edition Beatles shirt. Visit rockies.com slash Beatles for tickets. Come together. Trevor Story is going to lead off here in the sixth inning for the Rockies. A home run and a fly ball to deep center. Hey! 
Through the pitch count for Herman Marquez. The rough first, 23 pitches, then 12 9, 10 9. 63 through 5. Outstanding. 79th pitch from Sanchez inside. One ball, one strike on the third year shortstop, Trevor Story, at Irving High School in Texas. And among shortstops since May the 18th in baseball, both leagues, he's got a 940 OPS. That's way out in front of the rest of the talented class. I got more for you on Trev. How about the work on the road? Since May 15th, on the road, he's hit 338, on base percentage of 380, and a 550 slugging percentage. Five fifty slugging percentage on the road. At home, the numbers are are similar. Three fourteen, not quite as high batting average or on base percentage. Three fifty one. He's slugging five eighty three at home. So next time somebody taps and goes, well, Story plays at Coors Field. Roll out those numbers for that individual. Two and two. Well, that would be. I mean, you'd have to do research. I mean, whatever yeah, happened actually, to the wet blanket that people like to just throw over <laughs> the Coors Field and the Colorado Rockies? And the breaking ball gets Trevor this time. One out. Strikeout number six for Sanchez. And that'll bring up Para looking for his first hit of the day. They're playing the Phantom of the Opera. For Gerardo Park. Not sure. Ball one on Para. a strike one and one again the Rockies begin the day a half game behind Arizona in the West Dodgers are two back both Arizona and LA lost yesterday the Rockies in the wild card are a half game back Philadelphia and St. Louis a dead heat Here's the West standings once again Billy mentioned the Padres will be in town on Tuesday. That's fouled off. Here's something else for you. The Rockies are 31 and 27 at home. They're 36 and 29 out on the road. The 36 wins is tied for the most road victories in the National League with the Diamondbacks. Did you ever imagine somebody uttering that? Mid to late August. Yeah, the Rockies have the most road wins in the National League. Well, and that all comes down to pitching. Pitching, the Rockies have had solid defense for years. And because they're being led on the road by their pitching, 4.20 ERA on the road versus the 503 at home. You play good defense and you get timely hitting, you're going to win a lot of ball games. You well, will. It, it looks like they're going to shatter their previous best, 41 and 40 last year, which matched the 09 club, one you were part of, Spilly, that went 41 and 40. The only two teams to finish above 500 on the road. It's also why I've said many times that when you talk about altitude and Coors Field. This is pulled foul. You have to talk to players like Orion Spielboards to understand why, yes, it's advantageous to hit at altitude. It's advantageous to hit in, in, a, in such a large ballpark. However, when you go on the road from altitude to sea level and the ball movement and what the body, how the body's affected, it's why historically the numbers offensively for really good hitters drop off considerably away from 
altitude, and it's rarely taken into consideration. At Coors Field, we've noticed that more teams throw fastballs because the fastball flies true. We, we hear John Gray talk about it. I love pitching at Coors Field because my fastball flies true. I throw the pitch, and it goes to where I want it. At sea level, you'll get that late movement. And it's good. It's advantageous for a pitcher, but it's also, it also takes a little bit of an adjustment. But if you're a hitter coming to Coors Field and understand that you're going to see more fastballs, it becomes easier to hit. Not to mention, it's not the home runs that are affected at Coors Field. It's the balls that land in front of the outfielders that play far too deep. And then when you get on the road, you don't get the same results. And pitchers throw more off speed. And he dotted the outside corner there with a fastball. A 1-2-3 sixth inning for Sanchez. He has seven strikeouts, but the Rockies have a 3-1 lead. Brought to you by Remax. Monday an off day, and then it's the Padres Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then the Cardinals, a really talented Cardinals, a resurgent Cardinals team, will be in on the weekend. And we'll have all those ball games save the afternoon affair Thursday against San Diego. Cardinals are frightening right now. They're playing really well. Ozzie Albies, 2-3-4 and four in the lineup, and Albies swings at the first pitch, pops it up left side. Only fell over there is Nolan, so he might as well field it. One out. Well, if, you, if you feel like the Braves are swinging at a lot of first pitches, this is not unusual. The Braves see the fewest amount of pitches in Major League Baseball. 3.76 and they swing at 35 plus percent of the first pitches which is the highest in baseball Freddie Freeman said I, I see what you guys are up to up there I ain't swinging at that <laughs> one and up well it's a good approach if you get a pitch that you can handle if you're just swinging first pitch to swing at first pitch what was that? Remember, that was 93, had a ridiculous amount of late movement. It's fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. But if you're going to swing first pitch, and that's what we talk about all the time, it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be a fastball straight down the middle. It can be an off-speed pitch up, because a lot of pitchers will try to steal a first pitch with a bad off-speed pitch. This is lined to left. Parr is going to have to field it on a couple of bounces. So uh, one out single for Freeman. His second hit of the ball game. And a 
bring up Markakis with the Rockies leading 3-1. to one. The final bike to the game is Sunday, August 26. Ride your bike to the game and check in at the tent by gate E to win prizes. Plus, the first 150 bikers will receive a drawstring bag, courtesy of UC Health. Have you ever uh, thought about... You could do it from where you live. You could ride to the ballpark. So I, I have been riding my bike to the A train. It's about two miles from my house to the A train station uh, out in Stapleton. And several of the times that I've done it, it has taken me about an hour and a half to stop sweating. That kicks off of the shin guard, it looked like, of... Tony Walter, so Freddie moves up. It'll be a wild pitch. Actually, did a good job trying to block it, just uh, spun away. Yeah, just spun away on him. up 2-0. Oh. It's the first time really since the first inning there's any kind of stress on her bond. In fact, he's given up only two hits since the first inning. Lead-off single in the fourth. And now the single and wild pitch with one out, Freeman at second base. 3-0 and oh on Markakis. Fired a fastball at the knees. Strike one. 57 wild pitches for the Rockies is near the tops of baseball. Pittsburgh Pirates lead the National League with 71. Good slider on the back door. Three and two. Walking a single this afternoon for Markakis. Rockies up three to one. Bottom of six. And a ground ball to DJ. Two outs, Freeman to third. Just looking at the last 25 and now two thirds of an inning for Herman. He's only given up seven earned runs. It's 30 strikeouts now. And it all comes down to his fastball command and the curveball mix that he has. His off-speed pitches have been really, really good because of the location. Margo slaps that one foul out in front, one strike. Good pitch. Well, here's those pitches again, just to pay attention because of the batting average against it. The curveball 185, the slider 158. And with that fastball, it's slowly trended down with the 322 batting average because of location. And that one was left in the middle of the plate, and it'll cost the Rockies a run. Camargo has driven in both runs for Atlanta today, and it's now 3 to 2 with that two out single. which pitch Herman goes with. It looks like the changeup. That's probably the third or the third best pitch that Herman wanted to throw right there. Yep, it was a, just as bad curveball he got on the side of it. Outside on Ender Enciarte.
So far in front. That was off the end of the bat. Ron Washington whiffed on it. <laughs> All his infielders are telling him, come on, man, I thought you were good at that. Oh, he said there was English on it. That's why he missed it. Two and one. Yesterday, there were 42,143 people here. That set the new single game record at SunTrust Park. This is in the air, deep right field, down the line, and foul. And a good Sunday afternoon crowd as well. On the weekends, they've drawn very well here. Kind of hit and miss during the week. 2-2. Two, two. Outside, 3-2. and two. So at the left-handed bat, Ryan McMahon letting Marquez know he's going to move a couple steps behind Camargo. Here's Strike this. three. And Enciarte is incensed. In the inning, a couple hits and a run for the Atlanta Braves to tighten things up. There's the pitch right at the knee. Strike three. Three to two. We'll go to the seventh. Rockies in front. Braves organist and he is quite creative when it comes to a set list for the visiting team. A lot of prep work goes into it so here's the set list for today or at least for the whole weekend of course with the pitchers on there but I don't know there's so many I'm going to go ahead and choose Carlos Gonzalez the theme from the Muppets because you have to get there right we go by we, we call him cargo and so you got to get to it by he picked the Muppets for Gonzo so he went with the beginning of his last name and he told me that's kind of how he does it and he thought the Rockies compared to the other 29 teams pretty easy for him to find the name so I appreciate that what has been your guys's favorite so far huh they, they all crack me up I, I think you got a friend in me when Trevor Story comes up for the Toy Story movie is my favorite. Right, because he started with the Brady Bunch because here's a story. story, right? And he said that one developed, of course, throughout the course of the game. And he has his friends texting him different things. He has people on Twitter. He really engages with fans. And in fact, uh, we had a fan tweet us and tell us a little bit more about Gerardo Parra since you were confused about it. So I'll go ahead and let you look that one up, Spilly. Well, I know what it is now. Oh, you got it. You yeah. got there. 1-2 on Walters. 
That's fouled off. I, how about, didn't he play the uh, the theme to The Tonight Show when Ryan McMahon was up there? In, he may in, have. In reverence to Ed McMahon. I'm impressed. Billy knows Phantom of the Opera. Yes, I know Phantom of the Opera. I love theater. And it's Phantom of the Opera. Gerardo Parra. Bit of a stretch. Yeah, I had a friend of mine wear me out that uh, you and I didn't get that. And I think that, that a little bit of a stretch. But that gentleman is far more creative than I could ever be. I didn't hear Tony Walters when he was coming up. So I miss Tony's. Strike three. Sanchez starting to pile up the strikeouts. He's retired five in a row, three by strikeout. And that'll bring up Marquez. Eight strikeouts this afternoon for, for Anibal. Rockies got their three runs off him in the first three innings. The home run by Story in the second, home run by LeMahieu in the third, followed up by a Dahl double and a Nolan single to produce the third run. And down the line just fell. That wild pitch turned out to be pretty costly last inning for Herman because Freddie Freeman was at first base. Wild pitch moved him up, and then Camargo, two strike, two out hit. And this is sharply hit, but it's at Camargo. Two gone. And that'll bring up Blackman. Charlie walked this last time. 0 for 2 otherwise. And that will be all for Adam Ball as Brian Snicker pats him on the back. Sanchez will go six and two thirds. And it'll give way to Jesse Biddle. One of four lefties down in that Braves pen when we come back. Rockies up three to two. Both teams with five hits. Charlie Blackman, two outs in the seventh inning. Nobody on will face JC Bid Jesse Biddle. It'll be the 42nd appearance for Biddle. Three pitch mix for Biddle. 95 mile an hour fastball you saw right there. Curveball and a slider. We'll throw the curveball and slider about 20% each. Two strikes on Charlie.
14 home runs for Charlie of his 22 out on the road 31 of his 53 RBIs also out on the road. Bullpen's been hit hard by the Rockies. Rockies in the series have outscored Atlanta in three and a half ball games, 24 to 13. For Colorado, they have eight different guys drive in a run. Biddle strikes out Charlie here. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Rockies ahead three to two. Stretch time on a Sunday in Atlanta. And we'll stick around for a rendition of God Bless America. America's freedom with the singing of God Bless America. Performed by Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Lauren Daigle. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam god bless america my home sweet My home sweet Kavnar and our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew here in Atlanta. Charlie Coberson uh, against Marquez and Herman with a breaking ball for a strike. Well, Anibal Sanchez kept the Braves in this because after the third inning, I thought the Rockies were about to run him out. Ended up going six and two thirds, eight strikeouts. He ended up pitching very well. But Marquez been a little bit better. One and one on Coberson, a strikeout and a ground ball to Nolan. That's inside. Coberson 
was originally a sandwich first round pick between the first and second round, a supplemental first rounder by the Giants, came to the Rockies in the Marco Scudero deal. Oh. That hit his hand. So the tying run aboard at Culberson. Thought maybe that hit Culberson's. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna check it out because we've seen those overturned before. When it hits a knob, well, it was just the reaction of Charlie Culberson. He there's a sound. I bet you it caught hand and then knob, but it you could hear the bat. That's foul. Tyler Flowers at the plate. Adam Duvall is on deck. Flowers hits in the eighth spot in the lineup. Rockies have Song Wan Oh up in their bullpen. Dan Winkler is throwing in the Atlanta pen. Pop to third, line drive to third. And this is a fly ball to Charlie in center. Flowers first out of the seventh inning. And Duval will come up. MLB at bat is the number one Rockies app. Customize your experience to catch every moment this season. Get Rockies home screen icons and features such as MLB Talk TV Game of the Day, pitch tracking, in-game highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. Duvall takes strike one. Well, I'm sure for Adam Duvall, when he was traded from Cincinnati to here in Atlanta, he wasn't expecting to sit on the bench as much as he has. Well, in the outfield, this ball's uh, high fly ball to shallow left. Story will make the catch. Who's he going to play for? You, you got to play the kid, Acuna. I get, agreed. But and you're still talking you're about a play guy that's it's Yarte and Marquake is one of the two leading hitters in the National League. Agreed, but you're still playing. You're looking at a former All-Star, something that's hit 30 home runs. Well, here is the young man we were talking about, Ronald Acuna Jr. He's hit a couple of fly balls, and he was a strikeout victim in the fifth. Two gone in the seventh. 92 pitches in. Adam Adovino available. Wade Davis available today. For Herman, probably empty the tank right here. And that is right into the shift. And winning the race to the bag is Story on the flip from DJ. Well done after the hit batter began the inning. Herman Marquez, seven strong. Rockies up 3-2.
Hidden fees, that's transparency. By UC Health, live extraordinary. And by StubHub, Rockies fans, get your tickets at StubHub, official partner of the Colorado Rockies. Inside the statue of the great Hank Aaron. Handshakes in the Rockies dugout. A couple of pats on the chest from the skipper. Armand Marquez, seven terrific innings. He gives up two runs on five hits. He's got the Rockies in position for another W. Armand Marquez from Parker continues to turn in great starts. You're right. That's now nine straight starts that have been terrific. Rockies like to add on. They've done a good job of adding on late in innings of late. Especially with this guy, DJ LeMay, who's got a home run earlier today. Dan Winkler's now out there for Atlanta. Inside, ball one. Off the plate, the other direction, 2-0. Oh. I hear the numbers on Dan Winkler. Pitched in 55 games, limited the home runs only to three in 50 innings, which is very good. More than a strikeout per innings pitched. Winkler has a four pitch mix. I mentioned yesterday, it was a former Rockies farmhand that was rule five by the Braves while he was on the disabled list under rehabbing from Tommy John. He faced one hitter yesterday, Spilly. It was DJ. He got DJ to fly to right field. DJ's in front now, three and one. Dahl behind him. Nolan after that. Two. The very bottom of the zone, three and two. is right back at Winkler. One out. So the Rockies, you know, we've talked about this this year, that uh, late in ball games, they have scuffled a fair amount. Uh, 658 OPS, seventh inning beyond, opening day through August the 9th, 27th in baseball. But over the last nine days, the Rockies are second in baseball, an OPS of 902. That's uh, one of the reasons they've been able to win some games late last night, Thursday night. And they want to add on here late in this ball game. Top of eight. 3-2 Colorado. Dahl's had a perfect day, a walk, a double, and a single. if necessary Spilly have some thump on the bench today with Cargo mm -hmm. and Desmond most notably Chris Ionetta as well speed with Hampson <laughs> winning pitcher in last night's ball games up to handle the eighth inning Adam Ottavino no swing, three and one. Boy, it'd be big to get Dahl on with his wheels. It's a good natural cut to Winkler's fastball. Strikeout. The Padres come to town from Tuesday through Thursday. You can catch all the action with a Coca-Cola value pack. You get four tickets, four hot dogs, four Cokes, parking, and more, all for only $59 or $79, depending on location.
Nolan drove in a run with a single to center in the third inning. That's the difference right now in this ball game. Way inside. June the 28th. Those dates you kind of remember this season with the Rockies. Since that time, the DJ home run in San Francisco. The club's 29 and 14, the best mark in the National League. In fact, it's third best in all of baseball. One one on Nolan, and that's on the ground a deep short. Culberson. Throws out Nolan. It's 10 in a row set down now by the Braves. But the Rockies continue to lead 3-2. to two. Adam Adovino time when we come back. Herman Marquez and Anibal Sanchez and Herman got the better of Sanchez. Seven innings, two runs over those seven innings. Just five hits. He struck out five. Walked a batter, hit a batter. He did have a wild pitch, which uh, helped produce the second run. But another strong outing for Marquez. Last nine. Get this, Billy. His last nine outings, he has a 2.87 ERA. Great stuff. It's great stuff. And he uh, competes. I mean, the Rockies, all their guys compete. But there, there's always, it's nice knowing on a Sunday after winning your first three games of a four-game series that you still have Herman to hand the ball to. The Rockies were feeling extremely confident today. And it's good to have the uh, ability to hand the baseball to this guy also. What a year he's had. One and one count on Ozzie Albies. Here's the pitch, and it's pop foul out of play, one and two. It'll be Albies, Freeman, Marcakis. So you'll see three left-handed bats. Albies is a switch hitter. The pen. Been real solid of late. The Rockies have won seven of eight. Got him. Oh. He took something off that. What a beautiful slider that was to strike out Albies. 81 mile an hour slider at the bottom of the zone. The crossfire action for Ottavino. Difficult for lefties to pick up. They're hitting below 200 against him. And it is, it's a slower slider. It's such a good feel for this pitch. Now Freeman. And he fires at a fastball down and in. Strike one. Double in the first, single in the sixth. He has scored both runs this afternoon for Atlanta. Thought you might see another fastball, and it's 0-2. If he 
gets that arm side with that heater. It's going to run away from Freeman. That's the pitch they want here. 0-2. This was never inviting enough for Freddie to fire. One and two. Go down and in again with that slow slider. Well, the hard part is, is that's where Freddie Freeman can handle the baseball and he can drive the ball out of the yard. So they'll go fastball in. That's out of play. I would say this, Billy, the uniforms that you guys wore and they continue to wear today, you know, a, a little baggier than, say, back in the day. Freddie Freeman's a big, big man. One, two, with one out in the eighth. Oh, just off the edge of the Subaru strike zone. That's a good pitch, though. And that, again, it goes to show you the plate discipline that Freddie Freeman has because that's a borderline strike up in the zone. Two, two. And car, excuse me, I was saying cargo dolls out there and he comes on and makes a catch. Two outs. Got him out on the front side. Too quickly retired by Ottavino. And that'll bring up Marcakis. A couple more inches towards the middle portion of the plate, and you might have a tie ball game. That's what the worry is with a guy like Freddie Freeman, is that that is down is a place where he can handle it. But the essence is you would know better than anybody of pitching is to disrupt the uh, timing of the hitter and he disrupted the timing just enough that he was out on his front side. Here's Markakis. And that's a sweeping slider for a strike according to Doug Eddings. And 0 and 2. Had a long conversation. I know you talked to Walt as well this weekend. Several conversations with Walt. And one of the things that came up, he said, I always felt as great as the offensive talent was with the Rockies, and historically has been. He said, when the Rockies got outstanding pitching, that ultimately the story about the Rockies winning a this is hauled in nicely by Para <laughs> winning a division. The story would be about the pitching yep. and not the hitting. It's a story in baseball. If you can pitch, you'll win. The Rockies are pitching and now they're winning. Great inning for Ottavino. He pitches.
started things for Colorado on Thursday. It was Trevor Story who hit a ground ball to Dansby Swanson. Swanson bobbled it for a moment. Trevor was safe, and next thing you knew, the Rockies had tied the score. Excuse me, had gone ahead. They were down three to two in the ninth. Ended up rallying for three. That was the final score, five to three. This is Brock's first appearance since Thursday. It'll be Story, Para, McMahon, hopefully others. The Rockies have not had a base runner since a two-out single by Dahl in the fifth. Ten in a row set down by Anibal Sanchez, Jesse Biddle, and Dan Winkler. When you look at the numbers and kind of dissect them a little bit, the evolution of a young, extraordinary talent like Trevor Story, the biggest jump he's made has been against right-handed pitching where he had a year ago to now. It's because he's seen the baseball and he's laying off the tough pitches. The slider down and away what used to be the automatic two strike pitch to Trevor Story or a fastball up out of the strike zone. And because his mechanics are so much more fine tuned, limited his head movement, he's a much better hitter because of it. Strikes out there, one out in the ninth. And that'll bring up Para. The first 15,000 fans on Friday will receive a Charlie Blackman beard beanie, courtesy of the Colorado Beef Council and KOA News Radio. Para's 0 for 3, ground out, strike out, and another ground out. Bottom four in the lineup have yet to reach. Again, as Connor and Huey were talking about, just five hits for each side. But the Rockies with one more marker in the all-important run category. Still like to see one more run, get that breathing room. That is a base hit for Gerardo. And now McMahon will come up. So that breaks the stretch of 11 in a row retired. And with Tony Walters on deck, you could go to Cargo if you'd like. And that's exactly what Buddy Black's going to do. Lapar was 0 for 3 on the day. Gets a slider away from him. Punches it into the outfield. Gerardo is now 2 for 4 in his career against Brad Brock. Inside on McMahon. McMahon had the base hit to drive in the tying run against Brock. Ground ball through the right side. He does that here. Pretty good likelihood you'll have first and third. Brock was really originally drafted by the San Diego Padres in 2008 out of Monmouth University, New Jersey. Monmouth, yeah. Not exactly a baseball power. 3-0. Smart decision by Gerardo not to try to move up there, especially given the count now. Forty second rounder. Guy who pitched for Buddy. Hit. 
Well, that pitch was off the plate, yep. but uh, it's a 3-0. The automatic from Doug Eddings. You get it close, we'll give you a strike. See if Parra is moving here. Nope. And that's a base hit. Parra will and cut the bag. On him. And here's the throw by Enciarte out at third. Great throw by the two-time gold glover Ender Enciarte. Uh, Gerardo hesitated right around second base. This is a pretty easy catch and throw. Enciarte, Cargo, and Par all very close friends from Venezuela. All share the same scout. That signed them. That one was a little bit of, don't run on me, dude. That scout has been here all weekend. So here's Cargo. Pinch hitting for Tony Walters. Well, here's earlier today. All four of them together. Gerardo Cargo and Enciarte. Miguel Nava. Great story. Had a chance to hear Miguel talk about how he scouted all three of these guys. Cargo said that Nava saw him in a game when he was 14 years old. And Cargo struck out twice in that game, went 0 for 3. And Nava said that during that game that he watched Cargo strike out, every one of his strikeouts was after 10 pitches. He said, I like how this guy plays. He's got a He's got a fighter's mentality in him. It's amazing what, what scouts will see beyond the obvious. That's what makes scouting so difficult, but very, very interesting if you're a baseball fan because you go and watch a kid play, and it's baseball. It's hard. He may go 0 for 4, but did you see certain things that told you a lot more beyond just the box score of, you know, pop out, line out, strike out, ground out. Nava did. Did a pretty good job with those three, huh? Two and two. McMahon at first. And McMahon kind of forced Brock into a balk. He started to leave early, and Brock turned his shoulder. So McMahon slowly getting his lead. Trying to draw a throw. He moved the shoulder before he stepped off the back. 2-2. Two -two. Now a good swing from Cargo. Had a pitch he can handle. It's always hard for a player to get stretched out as a pitcher. Let's take a look at the Bach again. Notice his front shoulder move. And then he stepped off. Brad knew it. You just tell. He didn't put up much of an argument. So McMahon at second. See if Cargo can bring him home. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Three to two Colorado. Cargo's two for two lifetime against Brock. And three for three. How big was that balk? And the Rockies have a little cushion. This is fun to watch. They're doing all the little things, aren't they, Spilly? All the little things. As Parr, Parr leads off with the single. Then McMahon follows up. Granted, Parr gets thrown, at thir thrown out at third trying to run on his friend. Then you get Cargo with... Two strikes, two outs after a balk. Grinding the bat out, just like Nava said. Fights it into the outfield. And now Ian Desmond will pinch it for Ottavino.
Desi's has had, Desi's had a big couple of days. Seven ribbies the last two days for Ian. This was enormous. This was a two out bases clearing triple. And then later in the ball game, a two run single. Five RBI ball game. Desi chases a couple of pitches off the plate. It's 0 2. The double off Minter last night was the biggest one of this weekend. Down to his final strike, pulled his hands inside on a 97 mile an hour fastball. Remember, there's a time where Ian didn't have a, a double to left off a of fastball. He, he didn't have a ball in the air to left for a good portion. What a clutch swing that was yesterday. A little insurance thanks to Cargo, you bet. Pattern. Four away from Desmond on the Subaru strike zone. And he got him on a slider, but the Rockies add on. Ryan McMahon, a single, off to second, cargo off the bench, delivers him. 4-2. Rockies need three outs to shake hands. Bottom of the ninth inning, the Rockies looking for that rare four-game sweep here in Atlanta. 4-2 Colorado. Who wants tacos, fans? We invite you to follow us at at and Sportsnet RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more runs. Wade Davis has 34 saves. He's very interested in having 35 here in a couple of minutes. Leading off. The switch hitter, Johan Carmargo. And it's inside ball one. Talked yesterday about how important it is to see an aggressive Wade Davis. We saw that last night. Chris Ionetta now behind the plate for Tony Walters after the pinch hitting from Ryan Mc from Cargo. Cutter. One ball, one strike. Here's something interesting, Spilly. Left-handed bats, and he'll see two, because Camargo in from the left side here, the switch hitter. Enciarte on deck's left-handed. Then Culberson from the right side. 
He's allowed lefties a 130 batting average of 481 OPS. And that's not going to feel good. One and two. Right-handed hitters against Wade this year. 266 average in 867 OPS. Yeah, 867 OPS with six home runs. So he's handled lefties much better than he's handled righties. Wants well, a natural cut of his fastball in on lefties. And he's missed a lot of pitches up in the zone to right hand, as we've seen it. The off-speed pitches haven't been down buried like he'd want him to be. Wade's ready. Camargo's ready. Here's the one two. Two hits, two runs batted in this afternoon for Johan Camargo. Putting together a quality of bat. Camargo's put together quality of bats to your point, Drew, with the two RBI singles. And both of those came with two outs. Three and two. Nice play, EY, first off the carom. Quite that fast, he was. Used to be, though. Get that all important first one. He's got him with a slider. Beautiful pitch. One out in the ninth. Davis just never caved in. That's a great pitch. Started off as a strike, falls off the table. Camargo can't lay off of it. That'll bring up Enciarte. That takes a lot of confidence to be able to throw a secondary pitch 3-2, knowing that you shouldn't be walking the first batter of the inning. Off the plate, ball one. Well, you go back to Wade Davis. He, he is somewhat of an unusual closer. He's been a great closer, but he's a three-pitch closer, and, and that is not normal. And it goes back to the fact that he was originally a starting pitcher. Two and up. There's some guys that have been bred as closers their whole life. I mean, Craig Kimbrell. Here it is. Tried to hit it. Houston Street from the Rocky was always a closer, <laughs> even through college. Two one on NCR day. Three and one. You don't want to get somebody on base in front of Charlie Clutch. Yeah, the way he has swung the bat in the ninth inning this year, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Enciarte with a single to center. That'll bring up Culberson. That's why we point out why the first pitch is so important for Wade Davis. He has to come back from 3-1. The pitch is off the plate, but it's up. 
First pitch strikes for Wade Davis on the season, 52% of the time. That's the lowest out of any Rockies bullpen arm. Just in, a curveball. Culberson was hit by a pitch his last time up. He's 0 for 2. Davis working in the bottom of the order. On deck, the catcher, Tyler Flowers. And Culberson came into August in 364. Four home runs. That's 12 hits in 64 at-bats. 12 hits and 33 at bats, excuse me. And he's been swinging a steady stick. Ciarte has 24 stolen bases, but the most important runs the guy at the plate. Rockies up four to two. In the air to right field. In foul ground and turning around and not able to make the catch is McMahon. Tried to turn around at the last instant. It's a tough play. That's a real difficult play. Because your back is to the baseball, this is not a typical infield play, especially for a first baseman. You get closer to the wall, the sound from the fans, they start screaming. And on those foul balls, it'll have a little bit of English. It'll work its way back towards the stadium. It'll work its way towards the fans. Extremely difficult play, and Ryan almost made it. So ball and a strike on Culberson. And now it's one and two. Now big time advantage to Davis. Is that Assortment of breaking balls. Curveball, slider, cutter. Got him on a slider. Two outs. Two gone in the ninth for Wade Davis. After having him two strikes, he threw him a nice slider down, just like he threw to Carmargo. Great depth. He, I was going to say, he gets a ton of depth. A lot of north-south on that slider. Came in at 89 miles an hour. So here's Tyler Flowers. 0 for 3 this afternoon. Gonna let Enciarte go. It's inside. Quick con conversation with Wade and Hynetta to make sure they're on the same page as far as the signs go. strategy as well. That's the Arte at second. One and oh on Tyler Flowers. That is 
is nasty. It's one and one. Been his best pitch in this outing. 83 mile an hour curveball. Wow. It's almost like it froze mid flight and then decided to dart straight off the table. He's thrown two tremendous sliders in that curveball. Last night it was the fastball he featured. Off speed, two and one. Well, Tyler Flowers has faced Wade Davis seven times, has two hits off of him. Suzuki on deck, same thing, two for seven. Well, they're in the same division for a long time when Davis was with the Royals and Flowers with the White Sox. Two one. That's a strike Ooh. at the knees, two and two. Again, Flowers, he's been standing there watching the previous three at bats. He watched last night. No pattern, different pattern today than what he witnessed last night with Wade. He's up there 2 2, and he has no idea what he's going to see here. He's got him. And the Rockies have now swept the Braves four straight here in Atlanta. What a road trip. Five out of six through Houston in first place, Atlanta. The Rockies, first ever four game sweep in Atlanta, Georgia. They've won 10 of 12 down here in Atlanta. And the Rockies, pending the outcome of the Diamondbacks later today, are tied for first. They could wake up in first by themselves later on. And that 46 game stretch, Spilly, of playing teams above 500 ends. The Rockies go 30 and 16. Unbelievable stuff. It really is. It's, it's been the best stretch of baseball we've seen this team and ball club go through. They've galvanized. You're seeing defense, starting pitching, the bullpen's coming together, the offense is coming together. They're clutch. It's a great stretch of baseball. If you're not a Rockies fan, now, after watching what's going on, I hope you, you become one this week. Jump on board. It'll be a happy flight back to Denver. That's where we're going to go right now. The Rockies win this afternoon 4-2 to two in Atlanta to complete the four-game sweep. Connor?